Hey, welcome to Lyons Township High School Physics C. Uh, got an example uh, involving angular momentum and uh, specifically a collision uh, involving angular momentum. So uh, I'll just draw it out. Uh, the, the system is the following. You got a, a, a hanging rod. And it's hanging right at its edge. The rod has a mass m and a length l. Okay. And we're going to hit it with a, a projectile. Uh, uh, the projectile has a mass, little m, and it's going at some uh, velocity, v naught, uh, horizontally. And it's going to stick to embed itself in the rod. It's not hitting at the end of the rod. We'll call that distance x. Okay. And, uh, in terms of the givens and fundamental constants, uh, we are going to determine what is the angular velocity of our rod uh, bullet system immediately after the impact. Okay? Now, um, in order to do that, well, something is going to be conserved, uh, at least one thing. So we have to kind of figure out, well, what, what is that? Which law are we going to use? Okay? Um, so possible choices that we could use uh, we could draw, try our, our conservation of energy equation, or more specifically for us, conservation of mechanical energy. So can we write you know, u naught plus k naught equals u final plus k final? OK, can, can we write that and use that? Um, we could also check, well, in collisions, you guys are used to using a linear momentum. So maybe the no total momentum before the collision equals the total momentum after. OK, maybe that's true. Um, and number three, um, angular momentum might be conserved. So the total angular momentum beforehand might equal, oop, might equal the total angular momentum after. OK, so which one do we use, or, or can we use that? Um, now, I didn't write work non-conservative in this one because if there is a term that's work non-conservative, we wouldn't be able to calculate it immediately. Um, so then it wouldn't be useful. All right, so let's start with this dude. Um, assuming there's no potential energy change, your, your height, there's no height changes here. When this guy gets embedded and this thing begins to move, at the moment it begins to move, um, it's still at the same height. Okay, So we can eliminate those. So in essence, is, is kinetic energy conserved? OK, well, as you guys might recall, when we did linear momentum, um, this is what kind of collision? Well, it's inelastic. And we know that in inelastic collisions, moment, or momentum is conserved, um, but um, energy, kinetic energy, is not. Um, when this thing, the bullet hits that block, or that, that bar, or whatever it is, um, you're going to lose, it's, it's going to turn out to be a lot of energy, and that becomes mostly heat. Um, you get a little bit of vibration, a little bit of sound, which also eventually becomes heat. So uh, this term and this term are not the same. Um, matter of fact, the kinetic energy final is much, much less than the kinetic energy not. So we can't use conservation of energy to solve this problem. Okay. What about conservation of linear momentum? Well. Um, through our discussions in class, you know that um, for, for linear momentum to be conserved, there has to be zero external forces acting on your system, or the net external force acting on your system is zero. Well, when this bullet hits that bar, so the bullet hits bar, the reaction force is bar hits bullet, so that's fine. Um, those two are cancel out, and they're because of Newton's third law, they're equal and opposite. Um, we also know that gravity acts on both the bullet and the bar. The pin is going to pull up. So those two forces will cancel. Um, they are external to the system, but they cancel. So we don't have to worry about those. However, okay, when this bullet hits this bar, if this pin wasn't here, both would go flying this way. Okay? So this pin has to exert a force to the left on this bar. Since this pin has to exert a force to the left on that bar to hold it in place, there is an external force that is unbalanced acting on our system, meaning linear momentum is not conserved. Okay? Well, what about angular momentum? It's the same thing. The words are almost identical. 
for linear or angular momentum to be conserved, the net torque acting on the system must be zero. Okay. Well, if you make your axis that point, th there is no unbalanced torque acting on the system. Now, again, bullet hits rod, rod hits bullet, those two forces cancel. Um, you've got gravity acting down at the pin acting up, but those, all those lines of force go through that axis, so they cause no torque. And this horizontal component of the pin force that we've just talked about also passes through that same point. So there is no unbalanced torque acting on our system. The net torque acting on the system about this point only, by the way, um, is zero. So we can use conservation of angular momentum. Once you've figured that part out, the actual math is pretty easy. And we're going to do this all in variable form. So the two things we're going to find is we're going to find what is the, the angular velocity of the bar immediately after the impact. And then we're going to figure out like what percent of the kinetic energy do we have left uh, after the collision. Okay, And it's going to be all in variable terms. There's going to be no numbers here. So the first part is we're going to use L0 equals L final. Uh, so having said all that, um, before the collision, we have a point mass moving. Its perpendicular lever arm is just x. Okay, So we've got um, R cross P. That's the angular momentum of our system before the collision. It's just a point mass moving along a line. Afterward, we've got the moment of inertia of the bar and the moment of inertia of the point mass times omega. So I'll write this as I omega. Okay. Okay, so R is just x, P is just little m v naught. Okay. Afterward, we have a bar. The bar's pivot at its end, so that's one third ml squared plus. When this guy is embedded in here, it's just a point mass going in a circle, and his radius is little or little x there. And uh, the moment of inertia of point mass is just mr squared, or in this case, mx squared times omega. And um, that's pretty much it um, you solve for omega. So you got omega is, I'll put the x in there, you got mx v naught over all that, which is one third ml squared plus mx squared. So that's omega. Um, if this were like an, a multiple choice test, uh, we typically don't like fractions and fractions. So I'd multiply every term in there by 3, and you'd end up with 3mx v naught over big M L squared plus 3mx squared. Okay. So that would be like on a multiple choice test what you'd see as the answer choice. Um, having said all that, um, it, it, it's not. It, you, you can't use conservation of energy or linear momentum to get this answer. You've got to use conservation of angular momentum. Okay? Now, the second part of the question is, what percent of the kinetic energy am I left with? Okay? Or what fraction? We're going to get what fraction of the kinetic energy are we left with after the collision. And then from that, you can get how much you lost. Then you can actually also figure out the work not conservative done. We'll talk about that in a sec. So. For conservation or for, for um, finding how much energy was lost. So we need to know how much kinetic energy we started with. Well, that's really simple. K naught was uh, 1 half little m v naught squared. Okay. K final, well, now it's a, it's a rotating system. So K final is 1 half i omega squared, which is 1 half. I was the, uh, the whole thing, one third big M L squared plus little m x squared. And then omega squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this expression and I'm going to square. For the top, I'm going to square each part. For the bottom, I'll just square the whole thing. So you got m squared x squared v naught squared over one third big M L squared plus MX squared squared. <laughs> uh, now you can do a little math here. So at this point, we're doing a lot of math. Um, this, one of these cancels with this. Okay, and that's really all the simplifying you, you want to do here. So our K final is uh, one half. Um, you got all these. So M squared, X squared, V naught squared over one of these now which is 1 third ml squared plus mx squared. Okay. Now we're going to figure out um, 
what fraction of the kinetic energy is left. Okay. In order to figure out what fraction of the kinetic energy is left, I'm going to take the final kinetic energy divided by the initial. So for instance, if you started with 100 joules of kinetic energy and you're left with 25 joules, the fraction would be 25 over 100 or a quarter. You're left with a quarter of the energy. So having said that, um, I'll do that math right here. So we're going to do k final over k naught. Um, now, I hope you'll notice, and I'll kind of do this as I go, the halves are going to cancel. Right? You're going to take this divided by that. Okay. Well, the halves cancel, so I'm just going to not even write those in there. So I've got little m v naught squared over this, which is little m squared x squared v naught squared all over our one third big M L squared plus M X squared. Okay. Now there's a reason why I'm having you guys do this without numbers. Okay. And actually having you go through the math. Uh, obviously when you look at this, you'll hopefully note, um, the V naught squares drop out. One of the M's drops out and, and you're left with, um, K final over K naught. Okay. Let's see is um, uh, let's see here. Oh, I have it reversed. <laughs> I have K naught, sorry guys, over K final. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not getting the right answer here. So we'll do it that way. Uh, we've got K naught over K final. I'll flip it over in a minute. I, I put K naught first. Um, that was the one half M V naught squared. So it's K naught over K final. So if you do that, okay, you get the following. This now goes to the top. You get one third ML squared plus MX squared over this little m x squared. Okay. If we flip that over, you get little m x squared over one third m L squared plus little m x squared. So that's your expression for the final kinetic energy over the initial. Now, having said that, oh, why do I have you do this in variable form? Well, a uh, note. If big M was zero, meaning this guy weren't here, okay, what would, what would our expression be? Well, that'd be real simple. Okay. That would be zero and you would just get one. You don't lose any kinetic energy. But now look and see like, for instance, let's say X was equal to L. Let's say we're, that bolt's hitting the very bottom of the rod. Just keep our math simple. Okay. So X is equal to L. So now all the L's drop out, right? And let's say the mass of the rod was 30 times the mass of the bullet, which is quite reasonable. Um, then you get, you just got little m over a third big M plus little m, which would be, um, let's make m, little m one. And so, and big M is 30 times that. So we'll just call it 30. So this would be one over, um, a third of 30 is 10 plus one, one eleventh. So you have like 9% of your kinetic energy left. Okay. Note that the bigger this mass gets, the smaller your fraction gets. So, so if you make big M, like, for instance, if the bullet has a mass of 10 grams or 0.01 kilograms and the rod has a mass of like two kilograms or that's 2000 grams. So this fraction gets very tiny if this guy is like 0.01 and this guy is like two. Okay. So, um, you lose in that case, almost all like 90 in the high 90% range of your kinetic energy. So, um, we definitely could not use conservation of energy to solve this problem. Wouldn't, wasn't going to work. No pun intended. Um, so yeah, so you gotta be careful what you do and don't use. And again, I like getting expressions like this cause it kind of tells you what's going on. Okay. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Um, again, that was, a, that was an example of, of conservation of angular momentum, finding the right axis to study that angular momentum and then using angular momentum to figure out in this case, two things, we found the final angular velocity of our object. And then we figured out, well, how much energy, uh, was left at the end. And from that, you could also find how much you lost. Um, and also from that, if you wanted to use conservation of energy now,
okay, knowing that the potential energy is zero before and after, you can now find this term. You know this, you know that. You can now find work non-conservative. It's just k, k final minus k naught. Um, you would get a negative value, um, as you should, because you're losing most of your energy here. Um, and so that would be a little more math, but you could do it pretty easily. So um, hope that was helpful, and uh, thank you very much.